actually divide the Word of God in the realm of suffering. Yep, yep. Hallelujah. <laughs> there is a biblical suffering. Yes, there is. Hallelujah. Depending upon which scripture you find the word suffer or suffered in the Bible, it has different meanings. Yep. First off, you need to go back to your Greek and Hebrew concordance to find the meaning that's mentioned in that particular verse. Because there's many different uh, times that it's mentioned in many different ways, many different root words that's translated over. Hallelujah. But never does the Bible advocate suffering with sickness or disease for God's glory. Never. Hallelujah. It's just not in the Word. Now, people get that from you know, just one scripture they get from John 11. Let's look at it real quick. John 11, you know, when Lazarus died. And uh, we know the end result. Jesus went there and raised him up, didn't he? But John 11, verse 4 says, When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So religious people, when they get sick, say, well, this is for the glory of God. Hallelujah. I'm suffering for Jesus. And uh, he somehow... But now you think, well, who would do that? Well, people in wheelchairs. I'm not being ugly this morning, okay? I'm, I'm not trying to put people on the offensive. I'm trying to challenge your faith, okay? So don't get upset at me. But, and, and for sure, I don't want to have to go through the experience of... of coming out from a chair by faith, you know? I mean, I've seen people do it. I've been involved with people doing it. It does happen, thanks be to God, for His miraculous delivery. But I'm not trying to knock this. I'm trying to explain to you how this subtle deception will keep you in the chair. Hello? All right, so what happens is that they attribute this, that God has done this so they can be more spiritual in some manner. And it doesn't just mean people in the chair. It can be in various walks of life. Um, again, the term might come out, well, I probably wouldn't have been as spiritual as I am today if I hadn't had that Bible. Well, I challenge that. It says here, Jesus said, this sickness is not going to result in death. Verse 4. But God's going to get the glory out of it. So that the Son of Man will be glorified. Well, he was not glorified in the sickness or the death. Nope. That's Satan's glory. He was glorified when he came out of that tomb, was he not? Yes. Right. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Everybody talked about it. Oh, yeah. So much so they wanted to kill Lazarus and Jesus yeah. <laughs> afterwards because it was stirred up such a problem in destroying their religious theology. Yeah. So it was not the sickness, that satanic work, the sickness is. Jesus showed his victory, his glory, by saying, Lazarus, come forth, and he did. Mm. Now, he got, well, you got to consider he wasn't just raised from the dead after four days, although that's tremendous, miraculous, but he came out well. Healed. Whatever killed him was gone. All right. Life devoured him. Glory. Oh, Hallelujah. So let me ask you now. If you're stuck in a situation, a chair, um, a sickness, a disease, something that you're attributing that God is getting glory because you're becoming more spiritual out of, would it not affect more people and would you not be more spiritual walking in divine health, yes. delivered from that as a testimony yes. to the yes. glory yes. of God yes. of His divine yes. health. Yes. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. You understand, Jesus bore our sicknesses, diseases, and pains on the cross yes. at Calvary. We no longer have to. Amen. The glory is in the healing, Amen. not the sickness. Right. You can find that in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, and Matthew 8, 17 confirms it, saying that this was the fulfillment of that scripture, that uh, he bore our sicknesses and our pains, hallelujah, and brought deliverance to us. Right. However, biblical suffering is in the Bible, it, there, there is twofold. 
It is twofold. And uh, I don't have time today to delve into all the scriptures behind them, but uh, I'll mention them and you can research it yourself. However, the first one is suffering persecution. And persecution is mentioned in the Bible, and 2 Timothy 3.12 says, They that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. You will have people yeah yeah about you. Oh yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> different places, different degrees of it. Yep. But you live right before God, you're going to experience some persecution. I'm not going to talk on persecution this morning. This this next biblical suffering is what I want to hone in on. And that is biblical suffering is the denial of your flesh to allow the will of God in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that takes some suffering. Yeah. And if you don't think it does, then you're living in the flesh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Look at Philippians chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Well, we'll just call it like it is. Won't we? Glory. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 says, that I may know him. Remember, we want eternal life, right? Eternal life is knowing him. Verse 10 says, That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. Well, then you have to ask, how did Jesus suffer? Well, he suffered by doing the will of God. He suffered by going to the cross in your place. He suffered at the Garden of Gethsemane yeah. for seeing what he was going to go through and said, Lord, if this cup can pass for me, yet not my will, but yours. Yeah. So what is the suffering here? It's the suffering of denying your way, denying your comfort, denying your pleasure, and taking up the cross and following the Lord by denying your flesh. Yeah. 